Thank you for joining me. My name is Pastor Caroline Barclay here in New Glasgow with Master's Hand Ministry. This is the second Sunday of Advent, and today we will talk about love. Today is Sunday, December 4th. Today is also Communion Sunday, so I would ask that you prepare your emblems and please join me at the end of the message as we partake in communion together. Love. Love is, as I read it from 1 Corinthians in chapter 13, verses 4 to 8 from the Good News Bible, I'd ask that you please join me in reading. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with truth. Love never gives up, and its faith, hope, and patience never fail. Love is eternal. Love is the character of God. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Father of love, may we each come to you to learn what true love is. When we hear and practice love as, as you love, perhaps we can build our characters to be more like you. When our actions speak of love louder than our words, then maybe, just maybe, we can love all the people as we should. When our heart is filled to overflowing with your love, others see Christ in us all year long, not only at Christmas. Help us to be your love in action every day. Amen. God is love. How do I know? Well, I'll share a small passage from the Bible with you. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 19. And again, I'm reading from the Good News Bible. So it's 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 19. And I love how it starts out. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And God showed his love for us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, this is how God loved us. Then we should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in union with us, and his love is made perfect in us. We are sure that we live in union with God and that he lives in union with us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and tell others that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone declares that Jesus is the Son of God, he lives in union with God, and God lives in union with him. And we ourselves know and believe the love which God has for us. God is love. 
And whoever lives in love lives in union with God, and God lives in union with him. Love is made perfect in us in order that we may have courage on Judgment Day. And we will have it because of our life in this world is the same as Christ. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. So then, love has not been made perfect in anyone who is afraid because fear has to do with punishment. We love because God first loved us. This certainly is a powerful scripture. And we need to pay close attention to what John the Apostle is telling us here. As Christians, we love one another because love comes from God. And in his love, we are enabled to treat everyone with respect and kindness. We want to help those in need, pray for those who need prayer, sit with those who are lonely, and love those who need to be loved. But unfortunately, so many people today have a surface love that comes and goes according to circumstance. This is not the kind of love that God offers us or wants us to have. His love is as wide as the ocean, as deep as the deepest sea. It is as high as the highest mountain, and it stretches over you and me. I believe that these are words to a song. However, my memory fails to tell me what that song is. But suffice to say, it, it is God who is a God of love. And we love because God is love. Now Paul's words in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18, are beautifully spoken to the church when he says, so that you, together with all God's people, may have the power to understand the, the broad and long and how wide and high is Christ's love. This message is as true today as it was when Paul delivered it to the church. Now in 1 John today we read that, and God showed his love for us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. We read that in 1 John, and it was um, verses 9 and 10. Then the word gives us this beautiful instruction in verse 11. Dear friends, if this is how God loved us, then we should love one another. Every Christmas, we are reminded of the birth of Jesus, and we celebrate his first coming to the world. He came as a baby in a manger with a mission to be the savior for the world. For over 2,000 years now, all over the world, in many cultures, Christmas has been celebrated, and the gift of Jesus has been and continues to be the gift of our salvation. It is, simply put, the greatest gift ever given unto mankind. Let us not forget the love that brought Jesus to us and the love that one day will bring us to him, our Father of love, our giver of salvation, for eternity. Each one of us who has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior knows and believes in the love of God and the love he has for us. As the word tells us in 1 John chapter 4 verse 16. 
When Jesus is Lord of all and we are in union with him, our lives should be a reflection of his love at all times. As we look at the character of God, are we displaying his character in our daily lives? Are we patient and kind and not jealous? Are we not conceited or proud? Are we good-mannered? Or sometimes are we selfish and irritable? I don't ask this for there to be a record kept of any wrongs, mine, yours, or anyone else's, but for all of us to look at ourselves and our actions to see that they align with those of our Father. Do we daily stay clear of evil doing, and do we always speak the truth? Are we people who never give up, allowing our faith, hope, and patience to never fail? I venture to say, we all need to be in the presence of God more and more so that our character can be molded and shaped to be more like him. I am reminded of the words of a hymn based on Philippians 2.5, which tells us the attitude we should have is the one that Jesus Christ had. When you have a moment Please read that scripture over, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Now, let's look at the hymn. Unfortunately, the artist is unknown. <clears throat> Actually, perhaps I'll sing that, and you may know it and would like to join along with me. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask to be like him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, all I ask to be To love like Jesus, to love like Jesus, all I ask, to love like Him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, all I ask, to love like him, to pray like Jesus, to pray like Jesus, all I ask, to pray like him, all through life's journey, from earth to glory. All I ask to pray like him, to serve like Jesus, to serve like Jesus. All I ask to serve like him all through life's journey. From earth to glory, all I ask to serve like him, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask to be like him. Not in a measure, but 
in its fullness all I ask to be like him what a beautiful hymn to sing as our daily prayer imagine every day walking through life loving and praying and serving like Jesus and to know that our character is like him. What a blessing. When our character reflects that of God, I believe we have a better understanding of Christmas. The gift Jesus came to bring and the eternal life that awaits us in a time yet to come gives us great hope, joy, peace, and love because of the love God shares with us. May your Christmas be filled with the love of God to his full measure in your life. May the light of Christ shine brightly as you share Jesus this Christmas. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Mm. Thank you for your word concerning love today. The love you sent in your son, Jesus, on that very first Christmas morning has indeed changed the world forever. His redeeming love came at a significant cost. And we can never truly express our gratitude in words. As we focus on Jesus and live our lives as a reflection of his love, we truly can celebrate his love at all times. Amen. Now last week, we lit the candle of hope. And we will light it again this evening. And tonight we will light the candle of love. May this Christmas be filled with the love of Christ in action so that those around us see Christ as the God of love. Love God and love each other always. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this message today. Thank you for reminding us of hope and love and how special we are to you. Thank you, Lord. Now, before we share communion, I would like to offer the prayer of salvation. I invite you to accept Christ into your heart if you do not already have him in your heart, making this Christmas the most meaningful Christmas ever. For those of you who have never accepted Jesus, I would ask that you bow in prayer with me now. Thank you, Jesus, for coming as a baby in a manger to be the savior of the world, to be my redeemer and my savior. I thank you for taking my sin upon your shoulders and dying in my place to give me the gift of righteousness and salvation. I accept all that you have done for me and I give my life to you now. I bow before you now in humble gratitude. Please accept me as your child as I thank you that I can accept Jesus in my heart from this day going forward in my life. Amen.
If you said that prayer tonight, then I believe this will be the most beautiful Christmas you will ever spend. And I pray that you get together with folks that have a relationship with Jesus and that they can tell you of the importance of what it is to accept Jesus and to have him as your savior. There will be a second coming of Jesus and we must all be prepared and ready. So thank you for praying with me tonight. I bless you in that prayer. Now, please join me in communion as we come together with those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Our hearts are filled with the love of our Savior, who gave his very life for us. He loved us enough to lay down his life so that we could be redeemed to the Father and that our sins would be washed clean under the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. This is the love of the Father through his Son and the Holy Spirit that we all have. Our communion today is coming from Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28. Thank you, thank you, Lord. While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread gave a prayer of thanks. Thank you, Father God. Broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take and eat it, he said. This is my body. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Then, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God, thank you, Father, and gave it to them. Drink it, all of you, he said. This is my blood, which seals God's covenant. My blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this time of remembrance. Thank you for the covenant and the promise we receive every time we partake in communion. We are fully reminded of your amazing love, a love that shall never die. Amen. Oh, how blessed we are as we sit and take communion and remember and share that time with those that uh, we are in a body of Christ with, whether we're in a building in a church service or we're doing it by video. It is very, very important to call to mind what Jesus has done for us, and we do that through our communion time. So thank you for joining me. I'd like to share two courses with you tonight as I believe that they're a fitting way to close our message this evening. Please join me as I sing. I Love You, Lord by Laurie Klein and I Love You with the Love of the Lord by James M. Gilbert are fitting ways to bring to a close our message this evening. So, if you know these choruses, please sing along with me. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, all oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in I love you, Lord, 
And I lift my voice to worship you, all oh, my soul rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet. I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King. And I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Oh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for joining me in that, those choruses tonight. And uh, I hope they just remind you of the love of the Lord and how wonderful it is to, to be in his love and to share that love with others. Please join us as we go forward in this week. Tomorrow, Spencer will have something to think about. And Tuesday, he will be doing the Bible study from Romans Chapter 9, starting at verse 14 and going through to verse 18. Wednesday, I ask you to enjoy your time with the Lord as you take time to search his word. Thursday, please watch for Peter's picks. There will be seven of those, and they are always fabulous. Friday, Pastor Todd will bring us his message from Main Avenue Fellowship Church in Sundry, Alberta, and you're not going to want to miss that. And next Sunday evening, on December 11th, at Summer Street Industries, Master's Hand Ministry is hosting an evening get-together from 6 to 9. Please feel free to join us. And there will also be a video message that evening as well, so if you're out and enjoying the evening together with folks at, at uh, Summer Street, please remember to watch the video, uh, perhaps when you get home, if you're not tired, or the next day. So, that's a, a, a double gift next week. There's the uh, get-together at Summer Street Industries from 6 to 9, and there will also be a video. Next week, we will light the candle of joy. Please join me then, and enjoy your week ahead serving the Lord. He loves you, and He wants you to know how very much he cares for you. So I trust this week you will just bask in his love. And join me next Sunday as we revel in his joy. Thank you.